Hey guys, this is Avon, and we are back in Zelda Ocarina of Time for our three heart run. We are just going to enter Zora's River right now. I chose this spot to start us out because I wanted to show you where it is. That staircase over there, if you remember, is Kakariko Village. That's the castle. And this is Zora's River. It's pretty close to each other. Oh, the sun is going down. I did run here all the way from Kokiri Forest, so that's not surprising. I'm actually kind of surprised it took this long to go down. Not to worry though, if the Soul Kids freaked you out that one time I sat and just killed them. Not gonna be a problem in here. They only spawn on Hyrule Field. And there's our old friend! Hello, Kapora Gabora. <laughs> Looks like you've gotten bigger and stronger already, Avon. Just ahead lies Zora's domain. The Zoras serve Hyrule's royal family by protecting this water source. Their door will not open for anyone except those who have some connection with the royal family. Let them hear the melody of the royal family. <laughs> Just in case, you know, it, you didn't realize that's what you're supposed to do by now whenever you see a Triforce crest. Oh, for the second time, we get to see a sunset as Kipora is flying away. That's nice. I can't tell you how many times I've rolled into a tree to kill a Skulltula. Or to grab a Skulltula, rather, and have it just fall on my head. I've come to decide that it's just better if I stay still and not try to guess where it's going to fall. Alright, so normally, my first time through here, I would be taking that cuckoo with me right there. All the way down the river. And I might still, just for the... I don't know, the fun of it. But I don't need to, because it just goes to... Makes it so you can reach a couple of pieces of heart. This is our magic bean seller. I'm just gonna blow all of my money on magic beans. Chomp, chomp, chomp. How about some magic beans? Well, they're not that popular yet. 20 rupees. See, they go up by 10 rupees every single time. And so they're kind of expensive by the time you get them all. And there is a, a max. Now they're going to be quite popular, so 30 rupees for a piece. Supply and demand, people. This is how business works. <laughs> Have one customer that you progressively charge more and more. That's how it works, right? Because they're all the rage! 40 rupees! The popular magic beans. You'll regret it if you don't buy them now! 50 rupees for one piece. Just for now. As if you're gonna get cheaper. I know how you work. Alrighty. I'm gonna put this here. And this is going to become... a shortcut. But right now, it's just a cute little plant. Alright. Uh, what does Nobby want? She's sitting here yelling at me. I know where the other spiritual stone is, Nobby. You think this is the first time I've saved Hyrule? I don't think so. Alright. This is a pretty cool area. It has a lot of levels going on. There's a lot of interesting things happening, considering it's just a river. That's pretty nice. Those frogs down there, if I needed more magic beans, which I don't think I do, they give you rupees in exchange for playing songs. And I don't remember. I'm pretty sure that eventually they give you a heart piece. And so I'm skipping them for now. And if I become desperate for rupees later, I can always come back. Isn't this cool? I mean, look at this. Twisty land around a waterfall. It's cool looking. Actually, you know what? While I'm here... Oh, what is it? No, I don't remember. I'm gonna have to look it up. Sun song, sun song. Right, right down up. feels so weird doing with a joystick. Watch this. Boop. 
Hello there. Okie dokie. Got that gold scotula. And I am gonna now head up here. What actually does this say? Oh, this is the sleepless waterfall. The flow of this waterfall serves the king of Hyrule. When the king slumbers, so too do these falls. That's right. I thought that it was a Triforce emblem. It's actually a nod to play it. The lullaby. Gotcha, game. And this is a wonderful little sequence here. Making use of the terrain and the camera and the 3D-ness of the game. The only thing is, it plays that every single time you need to go into Zora's Domain. Now, if I wanted to go talk to these Zoras, they would all just tell me about how the princess is missing and stuff. So I'm just going to skip all of that and go straight up to talk to King Zora. And wait till you see King Zora. There he is. There's my boy. Hello there, buddy! Oh, my dear sweet Princess Ruto, where has she gone? I'm so worried. So we're going to investigate where the missing princess is. Oh, I just spent all my rupees on magic beans. Oops. Alright, I need 20. So there's some pots around. I guess I can try doing that. If I get desperate and nothing is working, I can always go down to see the frogs. Oh, there we go. There's three. The Zoras in this game are, are a pretty solid design. Fun fact, since we're just collecting rupees at this point. Zoras originated in the very first Zelda game, which was on the... I want to say it was the Nintendo, not the Super Nintendo. I could be making a total fool of myself, but in any case, the NES. Um, and they originated as little annoying green heads that pop out of water and shoot fireballs at you. And here we go. Now we're at 25, so we can afford the diving game now. And so these Zoras are a little different. I've seen a lot of distinction between like river Zoras and ocean Zoras. These guys are would obviously be river Zoras because they live in a river. But in a future game, which would be a link between worlds, you actually meet some green Zoras that are a lot closer to the original design, which is pretty cool. We're gonna go catch all of these rupees and make back the loss for paying for this game. Oh, they're all blue. That's boring. Whee! I love that. That's always fun. And I also I got two at once, which is awesome because diving in this game, as you might remember from the very first episode, really sucks. Happily, Link has a shadow, which makes it fairly easy to aim. Now behind this waterfall, you see these torches? I'm not gonna light them. I'm not gonna light them because the reward for lighting all the torches in Zora's domain is that a chest appears between those two torches and inside that chest is a piece of heart, which I don't need, sadly. It feels so weird because all of this, doing all of this stuff is like basic to how I usually play the game and it's just odd to not just run past it all look at this nice detail you see the reflections of the water on the walls considering this is n64 that's pretty good graphics very pretty i'm gonna get my reward here this is a scale of the zora kind 
which makes it so I can dive deeper, which effectively opens up the shortcut into this area. I kind of ran right past it without talking about it, but right outside the door to this place is a little dive spot you can take, which connects back to the Lost Woods. Just like that bomb tunnel in Goron City did. Now, because we have the Zora scale, we can now, or the silver scale is probably called, we can now dive down here and get this bottle. And uh oh, it's not an empty bottle. Something's already inside. Let's see, is there anything I want to do at the lake? Yes, there is something I want to do at the lake. I don't know if I'll ever actually use the scarecrow, but I can at least establish it. This is Bonoru, the scarecrow musical genius. Once he hears a song, he never forgets it. So we're going to make up a song for him to remember. You ready for some seriously creative songwriting? How about that? He's going to remember it for me. He doesn't mean that he can only remember eight notes, but let's just cut it right there. Now, we're going to head right back. That, by the way, is kind of the Zora symbol. It calls back to the Sapphire, which we'll be seeing as soon as we finish the next dungeon. It's kind of fun to see the symbology and common world-building elements make their way throughout the games as the franchise progresses. And playing the franchise from an early stage, knowing where those things originated and going, Oh, that's that's cool. That looks like the Kokuri Emerald kind of thing is... It's just fun. Oh, we should probably read that letter. <laughs> huh? It looks like there is something already inside this bottle. It's a letter. Help me, I'm waiting for you inside Lord Jabu Jabu's belly. Ruto. P.S. Don't tell my father. Yeah, so guess what we're gonna go immediately do? Hello, King Zora. Look what I've got. Oh, this letter. It's from Princess Ruto. I don't remember what voice I gave this guy just five minutes ago, so we're just gonna roll with it. Hmm, let's see. She's inside Lord Jabu Jabu. That's not possible. Our guardian god, Lord Jabu Jabu, would never eat my dear Princess Ruto. But since that stranger Ganondorf came here, Lord Jabu Jabu has been a little green around the gills. The evidence seems clear. Of course you'll go find Ruto. You can pass through here to the altar of Lord Jabu Jabu. I'll keep this letter. You keep the bottle it was in. Take it respectfully. Please find my dear Princess Ruto immediately. Zora. I wonder if that was meant to be... Recognizing me as a Zora, which seems odd, or if it was more like one of those Japanese catchphrases that you see in, for example, Animal Crossing. That works better in the Japanese language than it does in English. This overly long gag was also kind of the height of popularity as a child. I, my sisters and I still kind of quote this when we're scooting over. It's pretty cute. Before we go up there, though, we're going to dive off the waterfall one final glorious time. Because this empty bottle has a use, and that use... It's catching a fish! Come back! Haha! <laughs> I wonder how easy it is to catch a fish in a bottle like that, actually. Probably not very easy. Especially when the bottle is as pointy and irregular as that. <laughs> okay. Now we're gonna move on to the dungeon. And I think we're actually gonna do it in this same episode, since 
Zora's River and Zora's Domain really don't take a lot of time when you know what you're doing. Okay, we get to run up this little side path and head out behind King Zora. We now have access to Zora's Fountain, which is a different area. It's this big, giant, extremely deep lake. And poor Lord Jabu Jabu, you can hear him wheezing. A little green around the gills indeed. He likes to eat smaller fish than himself, and so we're going to feed him to get him to open his mouth. <laughs> Just the friction on those joints on, on that jaw. Oh, it's a good sequence, even though it's not really a, an amazing dungeon. Not to say that this isn't good and that you shouldn't keep watching. Just that this isn't quite as solid a dungeon as, for example, um, oh man, why can't I think of the word? Dodongo's Cavern. That's the one. Not quite as strong a dungeon as Dodongo's Cavern. Not historically a favorite. For all, it's kind of pink and jiggly and weird looking and doesn't have a giant Dodongo skull in the main room. I'm gonna ignore you because you're electric. And just run straight into the next room. In which, look who's waiting for us, it's Ruto! This is before her 3DS redesign where she gets some strategic fins, I guess, making it look like she's wearing a dress instead of just straight up naked. Now, Ruto, you'll come to appreciate, is a bit of a character, and I'm tempted to give her a really annoying voice. I'm just gonna go with it. You! Who are you? I am Ruto, Princess of the Zoras. What? Are you saying my father asked you to come here to save me? I'd never ask anyone to do such a thing. Letter in a bottle? I have no idea what you're talking about. My father is worried about me? I don't care. Anyway, I can't go home right now. And you, get out of here. Understand? <laughs> I can't... I really kind of like Ruto. She she has a lot of personality to her. Despite it all. Are you still hanging around here? I told you to go away. I'm okay. I've been going inside Lord Jabu Jabu's belly since I was little, but Lord Jabu Jabu is very strange today. There are electrified jellyfish and strange holes around. Oh, poor guy. On top of that, my precious stone was... but. That's none of your business. Anyway, you, go home now. Understand? No. Talk to you again. You're that worried about me? Then I will give you the honor of carrying me. However, I won't leave until I find the thing I'm looking for. You'd better believe me. Thus beginning a fine tradition of escorting characters through dungeons. And it never goes to your favor. You know what? Forget about this. These bubbles are really not uh, cooperating with me today. <laughs> Cannot seem to hit them. Alright, let's see, let's see. Can I get him this way? Eh. I don't care enough. We're just gonna do this thing. And toss! I'll just take that damage, it's fine. It's only a three heart run. Just step on this guy to get him to fly up into the air, target him, and shoot him. Whoops! I accidentally took damage. How shameful of me. 
Step. And I got gotcha. you. All right, that's all the threats in the room. I'm gonna kill this guy right now. And now I push the big obvious button that you've been staring at the whole time I've been in the room. We're gonna start here. Of course, grabbing that gold skull Tula. I believe there's a fairy in here. Yeah. Okay. And now we can just swim across to where we already threw Ruto. Kind of a fun puzzle, actually. It's a little bit like one of those get the fox in the boat, get the dog in the boat, whatever puzzles. Oh, it works this time. That's nice. See, Ruto is actually an effective weapon if you're good at throwing her. Which I'm not always. Oh, he dropped some rupees. Okay. Let's grab those up really quick. Make sure to grab Ruto, because if you don't, then she teleports back to an inconvenient spot. I didn't get my shield out fast enough. Octorox, also a very... Um... What's the word? Traditional part of the Zelda franchise. There's my lift. Whoops, that was a mistake. What am I doing? That was stupid. Now I'm down to half health. And I have to wait for the elevator to come back. Hello, elevator. I'm actually going this way. Duh. I call myself a veteran player. Okay. This first time, we're going to skip all the holes. Trigger that guy so we can run through close to safely. I am going to drink some milk because I'm not sure when my next opportunity to get some hearts is going to be. Okay. Not that way. Is it this direction first? I think it is. Now, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, this is a room where I've got to leave Ruto behind. But since the game knows I got to do that, she just waits for me outside the door and yells at me for going in. Ooh, ooh I'm not ready for this room yet. How inconsiderate. How could you leave me behind? If you're a man, act like one. Take responsibility. I actually need to go the other direction. So is Ruto bothering you yet? Is she the worst ever yet? Ah, yes, I know, it's the switch. It needs two... two people. That's why I've got two people. Thank you, Navi. Okay, okay. Here we are. This is more like it. Let's get you. reason I'm not just shooting them twice in succession really quick, by the way, is just because their ouch, that hurt cycle also makes them invulnerable for a short amount of time. And I don't need to waste bullets. I wonder if Din's fire would work on these. I've never really tried. Seems like a waste of magic. And pop! No, didn't quite get there. So now here is our dungeon item. Yay! One of the coolest items in the game, actually. And it's a shame that I'm about to not be able to use it.
but we'll get to that later. Boomerang! Pretty cool boomerang, actually. Lots of shiny bits. I appreciate that. I'm into shiny things. Okay, we are going to put the boomerang on my hotbar instead of the slingshot for now. I might regret that later. I might end up putting both the boomerang and the slingshot up and just take off the milk. Or the ocarina. Either way. But now it's time to go in this room. Drop you here. I'll be right back. And... Hup. Walk forward. Throw the boomerang. Walk forward. Throw the boomerang. Ta-da! No damage taken. I have had many times playing this game to perfect that technique of not taking damage from the tentacle things. Thank you very much. Please appreciate my skill. Dungeon map. In addition, I didn't call attention to them, but you might remember that some of these doors had big old tentacle things hanging out in front of them. Now they don't. Red slimy thing is gone. Must be because I cut the red tail. Do 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 do. Oh, this is the compass room. You know what? I am going to try to inspire in here. Because why not? I've never been great at this room. Not to say that I don't usually do it in time. <laughs> that was beautiful. It's just a pain to hunt down all those bubbles at once. Just gonna collect everything, even though I've already full on hearts. That was really satisfying, actually. That was a little bit like popping bubble wrap, you know what I mean? Just throw a magic spell down and they just pop, 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 pop. Okay. So now I've got the compass, which is awesome. Just totally ignoring these guys. They come out of the ground way too slowly to be any kind of threat. Now we get to take care of the blue tail. Forward and back. Oop, went back too quickly. Uh oh, uh oh. I almost bragged and then had to eat my words. It would have been really embarrassing to take damage from this thing just now. <laughs> and he didn't drop anything, and so I am going back if the camera controls want to work with me here. To Ruto and through the door, and now that we've taken care of both branches here, we're going to go down the middle path. Where we get to take out the final tail. In this room, there are a little electrified jellyfish, which complicate matters a little bit, but only a little bit. Because the boomerang is pretty awesome. Ow! Oh. Well, I guess I'm not as awesome as I thought I was. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Dumb joystick. At least it worked. I am going to take you off of my hotbar. And now I'm going to head back to the front of the room. And kind of salvage my pride a little bit. One. Two. Never mind, I'm still the worst ever. Three. And four. Did you drop any hearts for me? I need something to, to solve my wounded ego. <sighs> I'm 
so I just talked about how these guys aren't a threat, and I just ran right into one. That's awesome. <laughs> I am great at this game. I need to drink some milk before I die. That would be really embarrassing. Now, one of these holes used to have a tail sticking through it. I think it was this one. It was. That's awesome. That was preventing us from dropping through the hole onto this ledge. Which is the only way to get up onto this ledge. As you remember, that's where we came down with Ruto initially. And we're gonna grab both of the Skulltulas in here, not just the one. Okay. Hup. Let's go, Ruto. Let's let's blow this popsicle stand. I wonder how old that phrase is. That's it! That's what I've been looking for! Throw me up there onto the platform! Hup. That is Zora Sapphire. Our third and final MacGuffin for this stage of the game. Princess Ruto got the spiritual stone! But why Princess Ruto? Why not me? Oh my goodness, I finally found my mother's stone. I got very upset when Lord Jabu Jabu swallowed it. While I was feeding him, he suddenly swallowed me. I was so surprised I dropped it inside. But now that I've found it, I don't need to be in here anymore. So take me home, right now. Ah, oh, but there's always a twist. It's never that easy. I love that it makes you run forward a couple of steps first. Yeah, what is this? An octopus? Uh-oh, the door is locked. It's mini-boss time. As a kid, I thought that Ruto was turning into this giant Octorok. Which wasn't a very pleasant image. Fun thing about this boss, you can figure out which way you need to run by what direction the platform is spinning. You can't really see it, but Big Octorok Man is chasing us from one direction, and so we are running in the same direction to try and catch up with him. Which is easier on the 3DS version. I think they slowed him down or sped you up or something like that. In this version, we have to stay a little closer to the spikes for... Uh-oh, uh-oh, come on. Gotcha. Which way are you going? That way. Uh-oh. Ouch! Well, he's changing direction. It's kind of a fun concept for a boss. Mini boss, rather. Gets a little old running in circles, but what can you do? And hit! Jump attack! And that's all I needed to do. Two jump attacks is all it needs. Wonderful. I love it when I don't have to run in circles for 10 minutes. But now we get to do the rest of the dungeon without Ruto, which is awesome. Alright, Fairy, Deku Nut. How about a magic jar? Nope, no magic jar for me. Okay. On to the next room, which is the Jiggly Pillar room. <laughs> now he is slowly going to turn back from blue to red. You can see him turning purple there. Just got to jump up back off before he starts causing damage again. See? It's a cool kind of gradient progression of colors through there. And now this jumps down here and opens up this area. Remember this? This is where the elevator takes us up, where I stupidly jumped off without Ruto. Or did jump off with Ruto, but in the wrong direction. I was trying to head towards the boss room for some reason. <sighs> this has not been a great run of this place. 
Use an entire jar of milk. I'm still down half a heart and half a magic bar. There are a lot of electric jellyfish in here. They're not really a problem, thanks to the boomerang, but they could be if I didn't take care of them. Why do I need deco seats? I really want hearts. Just one. Just one would do me. Okay. And that makes four gold skulltulas in Jabu Jabu's belly. Kind of crazy. Now this might take me a few tries. We'll see. Kind of have to line it up perfectly. There we go. Okay. This is the first boss for which I am slightly nervous. We're about to go see Baronade. Baronade is pretty cool boss. He has some fun mechanics to him. He could actually cause me some damage. We'll see. I love it when the boss is electrified, don't you? That was sarcastic. Just in case you didn't pick up on that. Bioelectric anemone baronade! First, we're gonna disconnect him from the ceiling. Oh, that's a change that they made in the 3DS version. Uh, in the remake, these... Whoops, I got way too close to him just there. These connector, connective bits are the same color as tentacles. Whoop! <laughs> Excuse me while I just grab a heart. I'm gonna get rid of some of these jellyfish. And here he comes in his next stage, where he's now traveling around the floor. He has become mobile, ladies and gentlemen. And he's on his way to me. Ooh. And there we go. Now, he is too far in the ground to, for me to do anything to him right now. So we're just going to get rid of some jellyfish so that he's now easier to hit with the boomerang. Alright. Final stage. He's now flying. Sort of. Gliding? And back. Go back. Ouch! The trick is to move around in a circle here so that he, you're a moving target. There we go. All done. Now look at this grody death sequence. While I wouldn't call Baronade a hard boss exactly, he's definitely got more teeth than the first couple of bosses. Alright, we're gonna ignore the heart container, because otherwise we would ruin our three heart run. Go say hi to Ruto in the blue shiny light. You, you're late! What took you so long? You're useless! I was just lonely, that's all. Just a little. Off we go. Now this is a fun sequence here. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> oh, poor Link. I guess I, sh I should say Avon because that's what I've named him, but... 
Link, back up. Back up. You, you look cool. Cooler than I thought you would anyway. Just a little. Well, anyway, you saved me, so I guess I'll reward you. What do you wish? Just tell me. <laughs> Nothing, really. <laughs> I'm curious what the dialogue option for that is. But I'm just gonna keep going. I want that spiritual stone. You mean the spiritual stone of water? Zora's sapphire, don't you? My mother gave it to me and said I should give it only to the man who will be my husband. You might call it the Zora's engagement ring. Uh-oh, red flags, red flags going off. All right, here we go. I'll give you my most precious possession, Zora's Sapphire. She has a very pointy chest for how young she is. We have collected I obtained Zora's Sapphire. This is spiritual stone of water passed down by the Zoras. Her most precious possession? I don't really know what she's talking about, but I've finally collected all three spiritual stones. Time to go back to see Princess Zelda. Don't tell my father. Great. I'm sure this won't come back to bite us in a few years. Let's see, I'm gonna go this way first. If you look on the map in the lower right hand corner of the screen, you can see kind of the outline of that log. The, the little door is the entrance to Jabu Jabu. First things first. I'm gonna blow up this boulder. Well, actually, no, I'm gonna blow up the wall. And the boulder. Because we've got another uncomfortable great fairy to visit. And this time we're going to get through it without me being grossed out and talking extensively about her awkward poses and laugh and character model and oh boy. The polygons make this really funny. Uh, this is a great fairy of magic and she's giving me a magic spell. Hello, Ferrars Wind! This warp magic, I can also imagine, could really save my bacon someday. Make it so I can get in and out of a dungeon without having to go through the whole thing again from the beginning. Basically, you put down two warp points and you warp to it. Or rather, you put down one warp point and you warp to it. It's not something that I typically use, but mostly because it only works in dungeons, otherwise it would be crazy useful. But I could see it being more useful in the three heart run. There's Jabu Jabu. Alright, so I am going to go get some milk in my milk bottles. Since I had two empty ones at this point, and that was a little scary going through that dungeon, I should probably be a little more cautious. Uh, but... I'm going to find a cow, probably in Kakariko Village, and get that taken care of, and then I will meet you at the final scene for the episode. It's going to be an awesome one, so stick with me for about two seconds of your time while I go do that. These are the super popular magic beans, in case you're wondering, they'll soon be sold out. Super price, 60 pieces, 60 rupees for one piece. <sighs> Okay, welcome back, you guys. We are just leaving Kakariko Village. There's the staircase. Here's the bridge. And oh, what is this? We seem to be experiencing some weather. Cool. 
This is one of the scenes I get hyped for every single time I play this game. The pacing with the rain slowly starting to fall and the drawbridge coming down right in front of me and everything. It's just perfect. Also, since we saw the foreshadow of this scene in the first few minutes of the game. Uh oh, guess who it is? His eyebrows connect to his sideburns. Ugh, I lost her. You, over there, little kid. You must have seen the white horse gallop past just now. Which way did it go? Answer me. So, you think you can protect them from me? You got guts, kid. You want a piece of me? Very funny. I like your attitude. <laughs> Pathetic little fool. Do you realize who you are dealing with? I am Ganondorf, and soon I will rule the world. Oh boy, the story is starting to kick into gear!